Feeling good, feeling great. Yeah. Hey, Internet, I'm Chaz. I'm Dan. Welcome to Wine is Serious Business, episode 332. We're returning from Germany today uh, yeah. to, to do something we, we check in on pretty much every year. Yeah, but um, it's been a while. Did we do 2015 or 2014? I don't know if we did or not. I feel like we, we did, but I, I don't remember for sure. It would have been a few shows back, definitely, a ways back. But every year we like to check in on Ken Wright Wines, right? He's, he's got a big name in, in here in the Lamp Valley. And uh, to be honest, he makes uh, many of the single vineyard wines are actually yep. quite good. Yeah. Pretty polarizing producer, I think, but I feel like every time I taste the lineup, one or two always, always jump out. And, uh, yeah, and, 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 and I find it really enjoyable. And, and of course, 2015 was a year full of hype, um, so a lot of people will be looking to collect uh, collect this and that. Um, so Chaz picked, up, Chaz picked up a trio today. Uh, most of these we've done on the show before. I believe so, and I wanted to pick wines that we had done before only because... We, we sort of know these vineyards pretty well. Um, like the, the Freedom Hill is one of my favorites. Yeah. I know the Guadalupe, Guadalupe, Guadalupe is one of Dan's. And the Shea is a very polarizing, right? Like it's sure. a huge vineyard, uh, uh, sort of popular wine. Yeah, so big name, like, but, but honestly, I, 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 don't know, I don't know a lot of people, uh, a lot of people that I hang out with that, that collect a bunch of it now. Um, right. Uh, but at, at Day in the Sun uh, for, for a while. Lots of Days in the Sun, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, so uh, the Freedom Hill is uh, down it is down uh, s- south of the Willamette Valley. I think it's even outside of the outside, outside of any of the, the, the main five AVAs in the Northern Willamette Valley. Okay. Um, and uh, we've yeah, had says Willamette Valley Pinot Noir. Yeah, we, yeah. We, yeah, we've had good wine from a number of different producers out of there. But I know Ken Wright's been working with them for for a, for a long, long time. time. Yeah. Um, and and. Uh, and I've had a range. Sometimes uh, wines from Freedom Hill, I'm like, yeah. And other times, man, they're just they're just magnificent and, and Agreed. real special wines, which I think some from 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 Ken Wright, I've really enjoyed, we've really enjoyed on past shows. Agreed. Um, yeah, yeah. I've, I've had many good wines from the Freedom Hill Vineyard. It's definitely one that I'm always really keen on. Typically, like lean fruited, uh, really bright. And, yeah. Yeah, and well, so. I want. It doesn't get talked about in like the historic, very old Oregon vineyards. Like I feel like it's been around for a long time, at least as long as we've been into wine, it's been a respected name. Um, so if you see some by any producer, it's definitely worth checking out. It's it's not worthy stuff. Yeah, it smells like Pinot Noir. It's yeah, it smells like good Pinot Noir. Yeah. Some dark cherries, a little bit of raspberry. Rose petals on there. That's kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, it's got some sort of like floral component to it. You know, like a like a like a floral tea or something. Yeah, a little uh, bit of earth, a little bit of barrel. Good complexity yeah. on the nose. Yeah. Yeah, it smells really good. Wow, the structure's powerful. Yep. Big, Big time. Ooh. Big wine. Great yeah. depth of fruit though. Um, Boy, on the nose, I expected it to be a lot darker, but the fruit's uh, more red on the palate, or at least the core of it is, getting like good raspberries, really tart cherries mm-hmm. um, that sit right in the middle, and those darker elements work around the outside, so um, really good sense of complexity on this. Yeah, yeah. like there's a, a sort of a tart edge to all the fruit, um, like sort of young young cherries, a bit of pomegranate, maybe even a bit mm. of touch of cranberry or something. Um, the, the structural elements, the acid is very, very strong. The tans have a very firm grip. Sure. Um, yeah. That said, it's not like it's uh, it's completely out of balance. I mean, they're definitely two separate like things at this point. But uh, maybe a little more time involved to integrate fully Big time. would uh, really bring this around. But the, 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 I guess the point is that there's balance. It's just lacking integration currently. Yeah. And you know, brand new release. Chaz was messaging me earlier. He's like, "Where the heck are all the 15s? I'm having a hard time finding 15s." So these. These must have, you know must have just come out. Definitely on the leading edge right. of the of the high he end. He always 15s. is. Yeah. 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 Ken Wright always releases, I think, before everyone else. At least the high end wines, right? Which yeah. Ken Wright, I think, makes only like one Willamette Valley bottling, and then the rest of it's all his single vineyard. Well, bottles, and, right? and still sells a lot of it by Futures, which I really ought to, ought to make a point on, especially if you live in the Portland area. Um, if you if you like these wines and would like to get some, talk to your favorite retailer. Get it on the futures purchasing. You can save yourself a good chunk of money mm-hmm. um, and and guarantee what you, what you want to get. And, and I think uh, yeah, I think it's a good. Effort. I'm surprised more wineries don't do futures opportunities like that. Absolutely, uh, it's a great deal for everybody, right? Like they get they get paid even earlier. And, and yeah, yeah, check it out if you if you live and even if not, if you got if you know a retailer in the area, get in touch. Man, just uh, I agree with what Dan said. Like just a killer core of fruit here. 
um, the structural elements, while strong, are well in balance. And uh, I like this like floral. I mean, there's like a yeah, like a floral element to it too, like strong like, rose petals sort of thing. And, Really delicious. Yeah, yep, definitely getting a little bit of barrel on that, and I think that that, that ties in with the bigger tannins and less less integration. If I had another bottle, honestly, I wouldn't touch it for like six months. Absolutely. Uh, but I would look forward to it at that time. I think. Yeah, I think there's a lot of good stuff going on, but it, but it tastes young like it is young. Yep. So. Absolutely. All right. So the second one we're going to do is the uh, Shea Vineyard 2015. I just have to comment. They started. I noticed this on all of his Game Hill Carlton bottlings. Like, like they, they have Yam Hill Carlton actually on the glass. Austin now. Glass. Austin glass, yeah. Pretty pretty, pretty sexy bottle. Oh, that's a good Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you know, it's sort of like almost Shat Neuf de Pop esque, you know, like that's something Shat Neuf de Pop does. Or like really fancy producers, kinda cool to see. Yeah, and I heard rumors of that coming out. I don't know if I don't know if I'd seen him before though, so I'm not yeah. I'm glad for that, right? Good, good marketing tool, right? That's uh, absolutely yeah, yeah. definitely really put the EVA stamp on the bottle in a little bit of sense. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of the YC, so it's nice to see you. Yeah, yeah and, and 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 talking to Hill Carlton, um, really that like Shay's the icon, right? Mm -hmm. for, for many years, lots of lots of you know high, highly scored wines, uh, wines from a lot of producers uh, made from Shay, I think. People have been working with it for a long time. Have really honed in on, on the blocks that they love and what they like to work with. Um, so, I, I mean, I, if you're watching the show, you don't need me to tell you that. That's how famous it is, right? Yeah, you've, you've probably heard about it plenty before. So, some people may not know. I mean, it is a very large vineyard, right? Big time. It's, it's yeah, big. yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, it's it's if you're interested in Shea wines in particular, or like bottlings from Shea, it's actually kind of quite interesting to pull up the map and see who gets their fruit from certain blocks. Mm -hmm. That's something to do. We did that once at a tasting where we did a big horizontal, and it was just interesting to see the similarities between certain sides of the hill. Or yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah and definitely, or you talk to different producers, like when do you get your fruit out of your section, your neighbors get it at what time, and right. Yeah, yeah. A, lot, a, lot of, a lot of interest to trivia. Yeah, absolutely. So. Boy. It almost tastes like, it smells like cherry pie or something, man. It's like, yeah. you know, it's got like a, like a little like a crispy dough sort of thing, you know, like a pie crust or something. And more straightforward fruit on the nose to me. I'm getting, I'm getting kind of like the cherries again, but but a lot of them like like yeah, really good. jump out of the glass. Yeah. Like a cherry cobbler or something. And that's good. I like that. Yeah, I mean, more than high crust or whatever. Sure, like, like a blackberry like cobbler thing. thing. Like yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, you got some nice like a nice like core fruit. Man, there's like some sort of like pie crust or baked crumbly blah blah blah. Yeah. yeah. I mean, brings that to the imagination. Real friendly on the nose for sure. Boy, friendly, friendly on the palate too. Um, yeah. And and interesting, you know, for for a warm, I think it's pretty cool. I would have really expected a lot more dark fruits on the palate from this site from this year. Um, and this is still, I think, more in the direction of the red fruits. Um, there's still plenty of it. Boy, well, I'll try another sip. What are you getting? You got I mean, so, I mean, I would agree. I would agree, but it's almost got sort of like a bit of that a dried characteristic to it. Almost like dried cranberries. I, I don't want to say prunes no. or raisins because we're not that like that far. No, but it's got like a hint of like that sort of flavor. To sure, it. sure. Anyway, oh, wait, I get just the just the faintest tint of it, and I, if you hadn't said it, I don't think I don't think I'd say it. Power suggestion, right? It happens in tastings, but yeah, black uh, blackberries, raspberry, a bit of cherry. I don't know. I get a little bit of the darker fruits on the top. I'm, I'm experiencing more of the red fruits. Um, in contrast to the Freedom Hill, uh, the tannins are still full, but definitely more integrated right now, I think, too. Um, this is drinking way better than the Freedom Hill currently. Yeah, it, they take a while to kind of sink in the palate, uh, but, the, but the integration is there, and the fruit kind of, like, fades with it. And I think, uh, I think there's, yeah, again, that gives more of a sense of textural evolution, even if the flavors are a little more straightforward. Agreed. Um, yeah, and the fruit is definitely... Just, just more giving right now. Like it's definitely easier, an easier drink. Um, that said, yeah, uh, it, it's not maybe not as compelling or as interesting as the Freedom Hill, just based on like the the depth of flavor. But uh, you know, really easy to drink. Yeah, and, and I think uh, I, I think it's also nice to have some candidates in this mm -hmm. price point where you can get nice polish, get a higher end bottle of of uh, Oregon Pinot that is ready to drink right away. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd say, I'd, and honestly, based on some of the flavors, I'm less interested in aging this. Um, so, so if you get a bottle, or if you see one on a restaurant list or something like that, it's ready to rock. 
um, right now. I, 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 yeah, I'd say, I'd say go for it. Like, I, I'm going to drink another glass after we're done with the show. Yeah, I'm sure. This is pretty dang good. Yeah. It, it, it's it right now. So I should say, basically, I paid uh, $45 for all of these across the board. Sure. So it's, it's about what you'd expect to pay for 10 right, and about closer to 50 depending on if you're I say out of state, I bet, you, I bet it's going to be more for you, too, but... But yeah, between 45 and 50 bucks is what you can expect to see all these wines. Yeah, but if, but if you want to check it out, right, talk to the retailers out here, get on some of those pre-sales. Some of them really do that work to split cases up amongst people so you can buy smaller quantities. You know, some of them don't, right, six bottle minimum or whatever. But uh, but but ask around. If you've got a good relationship with the retailer out here, talk to them and see, see, what, they, see what they offer. All right, and so I picked this one up last for you, Dan, because I know this is one of your favorites, right? Yeah, I had good times with that. Guadalupe Vineyard. That's Dundee. Dundee, right? This one. It says Willamette Valley. It's Willamette Valley. Oh, maybe it's just outside. Eh. Uh, Eastern edge of Yankee Hill Carlton. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so not quite. Little Kenzie Soils. See, I gotta get. I still have my elevation. Down. That's 1989. So. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, does it say when they're planted? Yeah, 1980. That's one thing. Okay. I, that's one yeah. thing I, I really like uh, about Ken Wright labels. Actually, I don't know why we didn't we didn't point this out earlier. But, but they, they have, have a lot of information on the back label. Yeah. yeah. And I always like that when uh, producers do that. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and are always, you know, good, like, academic experience, too, right? You get some friends together and taste the same same winemaker across. Really, if you want to do ten different vineyards side by side, yeah. you can do it with these wines. Um, i got to say, the color on this one is banging. It's bright red. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that looks good. All right. I didn't cut you off, did I? No, no, no. Okay. Great. Great. Always, Always a gentleman, Chaz. Chaz. No, my bad. My bad. <sighs> Get a little bit of roses here and some deep blueberry scents uh, that are really engaging to me. Maybe like getting a little towards huckleberry. Yeah, definitely like fresh organ berry, like blackberries, huckleberries, uh, just big, big blackberries. Definitely like earthy aromas. Touch of, touch of rose. A nice floral note. I, yeah, I, 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 I really dig the nose on this. It smells very good, yeah, absolutely. Nice mouthfeel. Yeah, there we go. Nice mouthfeel. Boy. Wow. Also integrated right now. Also brighter fruit. Definitely, definitely more raspberries on the palate. A little bit of cranberry, mm -hmm. a, little, a little bit like that, but definitely a little bit of tart edge. The most acidic of the three, for sure. I think mm -hmm. I, I would say anyway. You know, it's, 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 like, it's it's more acidic at least to me. Uh, okay, for me, like with tannins and acid, when they're both super high, the acid is more like in my face, mm -hmm. and because the tannins are more integrated and balanced here, yep. or they're just not as like. The rest is definitely the least tannic of the three. Right, the acid doesn't seem as powerful, and it just sticks to the center of the tongue and doesn't, you know. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's very, it's, it's very good. Yeah. yeah. And in my opinion, I think it's the strongest city. No, that's okay. That's, that's two people talking about wine instead mm -hmm. of one, right? Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of tannic structure sinking into the back of the mouth late on the finish, but uh, right. but the, the drying of the acidity, a little bit of citrus citrus character to the back end of it uh, def definitely sinks in. And really solid intensity. Like the, the flavor intensity here is just strong throughout and not like, not like overbearing or overwhelming. Like the acid is all there to keep it completely fresh. The fruit flavors are fresh. Um, yeah, big time. And, and uh, yeah, just again, sort of like, it's not as easy drinking as the Shea, but it's got a bit more, it's a bit more compelling based on the structural elements and maybe like the flavors. So, and I just love the mouthfeel on this one. This is really good. Roughly these were roughly these were double decanted too, right? Like like opened up and aerated a little bit, so it wasn't a yeah. straight up pop and pour. No, no yeah, yeah, I decant, I, I, I like did a partial decanter. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, to try to they've been open for about an hour, just trying to you know, oh, nice. get some life uh, into it. I'm glad you did it. I'm glad you did yeah. it. I think yeah, young wines like this. Yeah, I did you know just a quick taste through to make sure they weren't busted, even though they come with synthetic corks. You know, you never know. Like maybe you got a cooked bottle or something. Sure, sure. Yeah. And uh, they're all completely different than what I. Oh, okay. Taste. So, yeah. yeah. Good good to good to see that. Anyway, I think my favorite of the three right now is probably the Guadalupe, followed by the Shea, and then followed by the Freedom Hill. That said, the one I would age, like if I was going to buy, like, you're going to buy a Kenwright six pack, right? Mm -hmm. I'd probably end it like with like three Freedom Hills. I'm with you on that. Because it's like one where, like, everything's there. The integration is just a bit lacking. If, if those tannins, I mean, sometimes you'll you'll find these wines where the tannins and the acid don't calm down, and that's always sad. But I think the, the flavor intensity is strong enough, 
uh, or balance enough to where if, if everything kind of settles down together and integrates, it'll be a beautiful wine. I'm entirely with you. The complexity is really there, um, and, and and I'm I'm really engaged with it. And honestly. Why well, I don't feel quite as strong about it as this one, I would like to let this age a little more too, as I'm having multiple sips, the acidity is becoming a little on the strong side, and and not that I wish the acidity would go away, but I look for more, forward to more integration uh, with the other elements of the wine. Um, but with that, I, I you know I'm still enjoying it. There's a lot of good things going on going on, and I think with you know with certain foods, or if you want more acidity, I think that's that's the play. Yeah. And this boy, like you said, that's just that's just. That's, That's just ready, ready to rock, rock right, right now. Um, if you get a chance, and, and, and if you're at all curious in drinking one, that's an interesting one to check out. So, yeah, yeah. enjoyable show. Yeah, yeah enjoyable show. Uh, Actually, I, I really enjoyed all three of these wines. So, yeah, good, good job, Ken. Good, good, yeah, you crushed it. Yeah. Yeah. Always good to see the differences across uh, across the table. So, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, yeah, all right. see you next week. Bye. Bye.